hardest thing is to start. So with that same mindset, I believe that decide that you want to pray. The day that you want to stop will come. Because days will always move. But the problem is this. You may deceive yourself that day will come and you have not prayed. Because whether you like it or not, that time, that 50 hours will come to an end. This 50 hours will come to an end. I will go, I will go. But you ask yourself the sincere question. Did you pray up to 50 hours? Or did you pray up to 10 hours? Or did you pray 30 hours? Did you pray 40 hours? Did you pray genuinely how many hours? I don't know what I'm saying now. At the essence of some of these tongues challenge, one of my friends do a meeting called it tongue challenge. Tongues challenge. That say you pray until you are challenged. Pray. One of the reasons for this prayer challenge is to help you encourage you and to help you boost your prayer life. So that one day when you go to someone and they say one to two five hours prayer, you look at it as if they are about to start sharing grace. You know what I'm saying? Put your heart to pray. Do you understand? Prayer will not kill you. By now you already know that you will not die praying. Is that not true? Because no nobody has ever died praying before. The truth is that the body of Christ has been so good in in doing so many things, but we have lost that culture of prayer. And that is why we believe that restoring the culture of prayer will do us a lot of good. May I believe that if we evaluate the entire of life here right now, nobody, I don't think there are people that pray that pray this kind of prayer that we are praying in this place. No. The entire of life here within these three or four days that we are on here. Why? Not because there are no people that have the ability to do the prayer, but they do not do it. And I realize that many people talk about prayer. Many ministries talk about prayer. Many people talk about prayer. But few people actually really pray. And do you realize that prayer is not the thing you talk about? Prayer is what you should do. Do you understand? If you are, if you know part, is it, is it part of speech now? What do they call it? Noun, pronoun, part of speech. Yes. Prayer is a verb, right? Verb, is that not true? Action word. Action word. Huh? And they say verbs are action words. That's so you cannot talk about prayer without an action. Do you know what I'm saying? It's impossible. You cannot say that this is a... And do you know that prayer is it's like a definition of a person? I don't know if you understand. Just for instance now. They say a verb. A verb should is that a qualify a noun or something, something like that, right? Okay, for instance now. You have a worker. Worker, you know when you say worker, you know that it's somebody that is working, don't you? When we say sweeper, it's somebody that is sweeping. If you say driver, somebody that is driving. When we say prayer, it means somebody that is praying. Do you get the idea? So prayer is a definition of a person that involves in an action. Do you get what I'm saying now? So we need more praying people. We need more prayer. We need people that can pray. God is always handicapped for people that can pray. E.M. Bond is the man that challenged me. If you see any of that material, just buy it and just read it. Yeah, eh? yeah you know, that guy that wrote uh, Why the Bible Tally. I have, I have a soft copy of most of their books. Let me tell you. E. M. Bond wrote about eleven books while he was still alive. While he was alive, I mean, he's not now. Oh, about nine of them is yes, dead now. Nine of those books are on prayer. Only two are on other things. Prayer. The same thing with John Love in the Hills. Oh, I'm just reading this one today. His books are the one that mentor this guy that wrote Why the Bible Tally. Powerful books. I'm telling you, when I wrote that, when I read that book, I stood up and started reading. I'm telling you the truth. 
There are books that you need that challenge you to play, not the one that will give you comfort and uh, you know. I get what I'm saying now. We need people that can give themselves to prayer. That will say, if my people, they are my people, and they are covered by my name, can humble themselves, it's a requirement, it's a, it's a hard cry. If my people who are covered by my name can humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray, me, I will hear from heaven and I will hear them. You have to first of all learn how to humble them because prayer will humble you. In fact, you need to be humble to pray. Proud people will never pray. Me, I believe that prayerlessness is proud. You be proud. People that are very proud will never pray. It takes humble. Do you know it takes humility for you to remain in this place? This is 50 hours. I mean, this is how many days now? Three days. It takes true humility to remain here and pray. I get what I'm saying now. The preaching, everything will bring you to that place of publicity, influence. Prayer will always bring you to your knee. It will always humble you. I get what I'm saying now. And no, no anybody can ever outgrow the need to pray. It's a lie. You can never come to a point when you will not have to pray. You will pray. Maybe you may not pray like you used to pray, but you will pray because now you have seen result. You get what I'm saying? And I always say that Jesus Christ was taught, speaking in the book of that Luke 11. When he was about to go, the disciples came and met him and they said that why do they pray? And I said, teach us to pray. As John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. That's the prayer can be taught. Do you understand now? You can be taught how to pray. What is going on here is that you are being taught to pray. If we don't impose this on you, you may never pray. Do you know that? Many of you pray because people carry you to go and pray. It's the truth. Do you know that I began to fast when they imposed fasting on us? Normally, I never believe that I can be able to have because I had gastric ulcer, then heart bone, chest bone, everything that bone. So it's impossible for me to fast because every circumstances around me believe, convince me that I cannot do it. Do you know what I'm saying now? Mama, I hope you don't have any of those issues. Mom, I don't know. Mom, hope mom is not saying the truth so that I will pray for you. She's not okay. That's good. Ah, mom, don't even know her. I don't say you have ulcer. Ah, see, Mama has been praying here since. And Mommy say, leave my daughter to come back home. I say, she's praying for you. So, everything around me was anti prayer. Until one day they put it upon us. They say, whether you are sick or you are not sick, just fast. Hey! Did he hit me? No, you can hit me. Like, how did you want to kill me? When I started, I was taking time. I was, I was sitting down like this. I was looking at time. Hey! And I said, "Why that? The fact that I did it twelve. After I did, it was my flesh. It's not the hard bun that made me eat. It was the flesh. Because I was looking at the time. So much we kept. <laughs> and I did not pray. I was just watching a clock until time to eat. I eat. The next day, the same day. The next day I waited again after 2 o'clock. And that day 3, and that day 4, and that day, ah! I said that I need to see that you not die. And I take myself, I said, ah, I'm okay. Until I realized I was doing that for long and I got tired. And I said, I've been fasting, I'm fasting, and I said, they say, say you fast and pray. Anytime you see fasting, you see prayer, follow it. In scripture. You can decide to fast and study. Eh? But whether you fast and study, you should pray. Because fasting goes with prayer. Jesus said, This guy will go in and say, By fasting. Anytime you see fasting, you see prayer for you. You only follow it to follow it down. If you don't, you will be the same verse. You go down small to follow it. Because they are this like Magi and salt. All of them have salt. And you all have, they have a taste. But they are distinguished. Please, you are not going to die. And I always ask, what is the prayer that John the Baptist was seeing disciples to pray? What was the kind of prayer? Because they teach us to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. What was 
Baptist, the prayer of John the Baptist was. You know, many of Jesus Christ's disciples, some of them were John the Baptist disciples. Do you realize that? Huh? But when Jesus Christ came and he began to do many things, so he was point there. He said, "This is the the Lamb that take away the sins of the world." Many of them left John the Baptist and started following him. And when they left, he said, "Well, I must decrease that he may increase." No contention. But they realize also that Jesus Christ is an experiential teacher. That's it. He will impose anything upon you. He wants you to learn it experientially. He will never pay to do what he's not doing. And prayer is something that you cannot be taught without an experience. There is no way we can teach you prayer without bringing you to all this kind of place to pray. We can just do the meeting there on a generator and just no that one whether you are not praying, we don't know who is not praying. But in this kind of situation, you must make the contact, you must make the experience. And whether we like it or not, you must have prayed. You may not have prayed all the least among us, eh? Must have prayed. And you realize that the prayer that John the Baptist to teach people was the prayer of sin, repentance, baptism from dead works, and many of all those kind of futuristic prayer that you're hoping on something else. When Jesus Christ comes, he says, Now the kingdom of God is now. The kingdom of God is here and now. And Jesus told them that when you pray, say, that tells you that whether you like it or not, you must say something. Now I tell you that the secret to prayer is that you make sure you are saying something. But just as a when you pray, when you decide to pray, say. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to say. It's just like this issue that you want to command the spirit. You have to open your mouth and say something. You can slap a general. If the general will not say anything, you are still safe. I mean, you can say, general, I mean, you slap it. But if he say, kill him, you better start running. Because he says something. Authority is enforced by your speaking. Just yes, what I'm saying now. So your prayer is, is you are enforcing authority. You are enforcing legislation. You are enforcing the verdict of God. From the borders of your condition to the face of the earth. And I always say that if English means anything, when you pray and if you pray are two different entirely. Jesus Christ said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. If I, that's, if you like, serve Muhammad, lift Muhammad up. If you like, serve Buddha, lift Buddha up. If you like, serve Akongu. If you like, serve Ezemo, lift Ezemo up. But if me, you will lift Jesus up. Me, Jesus, will draw all men to me. That is a decision. You have to decide. But when you come to prayer, you say, when you pray, say, that's to say, if I say, Paul, when you come to my house, and I say, Paul, if you come to my house, you know it's too different. If you come to my house, if you like, come. If you like, don't come. But when you come to my house, it means that whether Paul like it or not, whether from now to the next 1,000 years, there is one day that I'm sure he will come to my house. Jesus is too sure that a time will come when you will have to pray. Because situations, circumstances, challenges and everything will push you to the place of prayer. One day we look for how to pray. And do you realize that every religion on earth pray? Even I don't worship I they pray more. Muslim pray. Buddha pray. Hindu pray. Every kind of people pray. Any atheist Let me tell you, everybody has a tail and live by faith. Everybody. It takes faith for your eyes to work. It takes faith to be sure that when you put food in your mouth, it will go to somewhere you call stomach. For have you ever removed your heart and see it? But you have believed that you have a heart. Have you removed your kidney and see it? But you believe you have it. Do you know how blood flows in your body? You just believe it. So everybody requires faith for one thing or the other. And prayer is what facilitates our faith. The Bible says, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. 
So anything that doesn't look like what faith is stored in your life, you pray it out. I get what I'm saying. But the challenge is that many more times will require consolation to pray. I mean, consolation. What I mean by consolation is we need a situation to make us to pray. You know, if you are every day in your house, you are sleeping at night and at night you hear thunder, you hear the room shaking, brrr, so you will cry to even the God of your father you don't even know. You will shout. You wake up one day in the night, you see a snake big standing like you looking at you. You will cry to something. That's the problem. You know you will know you will shout in Amen. I was watching that clip of the plane that crashed. Come and see how people are shouting all kinds of God. When the plane was about to cry, immediately the plane lost control. She cried. How did my boy here? Her big body were crying. Because they are dying. The plane escaped from the sky and is coming to those dive. That's how all of them crash. Wow. They died. They are all almost 200 people. Just like that. Imagine if those people made that play. At that time, they hold their hands and begin to pray. See, let me tell you, faith will make sure that even, even if a bird will come and stay on the plane, it will fly. Now, very sure. But they were calling gods that were dead. If you don't know God now, when the situation comes, he may be very far. Not because he's far, but because you are far from him. Do you realize that God is never far from anybody? You are the one that is far from God. Because God is everywhere. So I encourage you. You don't need encouragement to pray. You don't need situation to make you pray. So you are waiting until they say you have cancer. You have liver problem. That be before you run from one prayer house to the other. No, no. Pray now so that you don't have to pray. Okay. Like I always say that the prayer you refuse to pray today, you may pray them tomorrow in tears. In deep tears. If you refuse to pray now that you have the time, when pressure comes, you pray. An outside man doesn't care. Whether rain is falling or he must go to mocks. Sometimes if you are in class, when it's time for their prayer, I tell you those guys will go and pray. If you are traveling with them, when is that time for prayer? If, they, if you mean to block the road, they will block the road and pray. We are the only ones that need. I'm very serious. And as I'm going to tell you, I want to go and pray. We want to close shop. If you are serious, you wait. But we, I know people that are doing work that is making them not to even go to church on Sunday. Work, oh, that they are paying them maybe 30,000. But you know, even if you get if somebody get you angry in your workplace, you still wake up and go to work the next morning. Yes. Why? Because you need your salary every month. See, we don't have to we don't have to, to do certain things that look looks as though we don't really honor and value God. Me, I, I believe that praying it means that you do honor and value God. Giving time to God means you value Him, you honor Him. Then, like, you cannot be in a relationship with the and not giving that time. I mean, this is how God here with me. Yes! It means you honor her, it means you value her. If you keep giving these things every day, see, one day you have to marry yourself. Now, I'm very serious. Because love to anybody means care, time, and attention. At least. Is give time to what you believe. Give time crying. Give time praying. Let me be done good on this my place. And I find out that not only the the lights don't pray. I mean, not only the members don't pray. Even the pastors, ministers now, they have stopped praying. I'm very serious. Let me be frank with you. If, for instance, now, if God, if not in the devil, if God give us each of every one of us two two billion, will you still come and pray? 
They have to ask yourself, is this a question? You'll be serious spending the money as Carter said. Many of you will never be in this Nigeria again. What do you want to stay to do with this guy? This guy bush again. You call Nigeria Zoo. I know my friend that you talk about for the UK. He said, Come! See, this is how this country is. He doesn't know. I say, Young man, you were born here. You stayed here for 20 something years. You just went there for how many years? So you don't understand. This is, this is, this is your own land. Say, Hey, bush everywhere, bush everywhere. Say, It's feeling as though it's no secure. That's what you see. Because there, there, when you turn here, you see how you turn here, you see how. You'll be, you'll be in Dubai. You'll be in uh, Canada. I think. All these ladies, they know many countries, eh? Try. See, if God, if money can make you lose your focus with God, God may not give. That means that God is more disciplined than you. I learned that that God is still in Canada. Yes. The richest man in Africa. He's not staying in UK. That guy, they can. Yes. For you. My God. Who want to marry him? <laughs> my God. Oh God. What did she want? Is it money? Is it money bought her? Let me fall back. You want to marry somebody that has money. It's good. But let me tell you, if he doesn't have your time, you will regret it one day. Yes, very true. Even someone that is anointed. Very anointed. I don't have your time. You will regret it one day. Because at the tell you discover that it's not the anointing you want, it's not the money you want. It's the person you marry. Do you know if no magic anointing you marry the money? Think what I'm saying now. If you say to me, God, God, you came to God not because of all those things. God wants you. Do you get it now? Jesus Christ did not die for us to have Christian, Catholic, what do they call it? They are two months now. You die so that you can have a personal relationship with him. And you can develop that true prayer. Very, very true. Very, very true. Part of the three ingredients that a believer needs for spiritual growth is fasting, prayer, and study of the word. But prayer do more. You know, if you pray right here, it will force you to study. It will challenge your ignorance. Do you get what I'm saying now? Right prayer. So please, you have to you have to love this culture. You know, we are saying this in order that maybe let's imagine if Paul is not there, Kratos is not there, Mayo is not there. Uh, Akonda is not there, I'm not there. And maybe even his text for sometimes not there. Will you stick for him? Do you understand? If, for instance, now you marry, let's say we send you to one house, we will marry you out to maybe somebody in Kano. Not that we tell you, somebody in Kano. And uh, can we be sure that you'll be praying there? So that's why we have to make sure that you. Prayer enter you here by force. We we'll put it inside you like memory card, so that when you go there, you play it. You very very nice, 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 nice. I just want to say, we want prayer to possess you so much. The spirit of prayer. Just like, like, you say, can you? Mm-hmm. Then I was like, you see this imagine you will be careful. You just gather and tell them before you give them food, you do one hour prayer. See, yeah, we will be careful. God, God was passed some of us, and we have dangerous plans. See the kind of plan that Carter is planning. It's a very good thing. If God give us one billion now, all these young men, young guys that are looking for food, we will fill the house for them and gather them inside. No need to throw away your rubber. We will buy you rubber. In fact, you will eat in dining table. But prayer, we will pray. I'm very serious. And I love that was what Sonia Adelaide did in Ukraine. Sonia Adelaide went to Ukraine and began to go to all these streets, all these people that are homeless and the rest. He gathered them and used them for the kingdom. And he trained all those people that were nothing, nothing. Some of them, he now began to send them to a member of House of Assembly, Councillor, 
uh, all these things because it's vote is population if we can gather 200,000 almajris which I know they are in Latin 200 almajris almaj if we can gather them feed them every day to the point they reach 18 years to get a voter's card even a governor want to become governor as say come and find you I say 200,000, not 2,000. As in this point. Uh, even if it's 2,000, my dear. It will be told to be only. Oh, yes. So the government will come and meet you and say, ah, vote for me, oh, vote for me. Oh. So why not we not look for one of the Almagri that we have trained as a leader? We push him and say, okay, everybody vote for this one. You get what I'm saying now? Then we take another person, you come out, come out for counselor. We vote for this one, counselor. Another person, you come out for counselor and say, vote for this one. Even if we lose governor, we will get at least the other one. We will have our own cabal. And the righteous cabal. Not in there, will to be coming from there. Yes. And giving us ABC. So, so please, we are very intentional about this so that by the time tomorrow you are not with us, you are married, you are gone, we can be sure that you will be where you are and you are praying. You know that many of us, somebody teach us prayer, or somehow we learn prayer, or we are taught prayer. We were not like this before too. Do you know what I'm saying? All of us went through the process. And we will deceive you if we don't allow you to go through the same process. Because the same way that we learn this thing, that's the same way that we have to learn it. Experiential working. I always tell you that you must realize that prayer is a hard thing. It's hard for everybody. And yesterday after we decided to rest for a few moments, when I lied down, one guy met me, he said, he called me that he wanted to talk to me. I said, young man, can't you see I'm just trying to sleep? Allow me to sleep. I'm not a spirit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is human. Everybody too is tired like the way you are tired too. You, you know what I'm saying now? So you can propose in your heart to pray and God will help you. You can propose, you can decide that you pray and God will help you. Do you understand? Do you, do you understand? And there are no any special people anointed to pray. There are only people that are grace to pray. And everybody can assess the grace. The grace is general for everybody. Okay? And the degree to which God helps you through praying is the degree to which you can pray. Let God help you. As you pray. Okay. And God is always willing to help you pray. I always say that if you pray from your strength, you will be weak. Or if you pray from your weakness, you will be strengthened by God. Because the Spirit of God is supposed to strengthen you as you pray. That's another challenge that people always have. Why praying? is the battlefield of the mind. So I when you are praying, when we say we should pray, after one hour, you are still thinking of uh, NT, you are thinking of Japanese, you are thinking of leather, you are thinking of Tewata, you are thinking of uh, Kulu, you are thinking of cake, you are thinking of uh, Bible, you are thinking of bag. As you are praying, you are thinking of your school, you are thinking of your friends, you are thinking of Amina, you are thinking of uh, Salafina, Salamatu. So for two hours, you are thinking. Your mind has traveled there and come back here, travel here and come back here, travel here and come back. They are walking over, I see things. You are just a busy thinking person. And you are still talking in your mouth. Too. But after, by the time we say, because you know, they say, when it's called, everybody is very, very serious. You know why I think you start getting serious. Before you know you too, you stop thinking and you start praying. But after then, it's about two hours that you have been thinking. And after when we add it, all the time you have prayed, we, we subtract the time you have prayed and the time you have think. But you call you have just prayed for 30 minutes. <laughs> and all other times you're just thinking. And prayer is not thinking. You know something? You can conquer that battlefield of the mind intentionally. You have to choose to win it. How do you do that? Stop wondering. The law is simple. Your talking is greater than your thinking. As I'm talking now, I'm not thinking many things. Do you know that? If you are truly focused while you are talking, you only think it too many things. It's when you are, it's when you are distracted while you are talking, that you'll be thinking too many things. So why do you intend to pray? If you miss, why do people close their eyes when they want to pray? So they don't see things. 
yes that will distract them i know a guy that will turn his face to the wall and be praying i'm very serious if it means for you to close your eyes pray. if it means for you to walk around walk some people of you they say pray, you just stay one place and you're done looking here you look at everybody you go here you go here you go here you go here again you go here you go here you go here you go here again you go here you start counting your shoes then you start to go see the clue and just put see the answer just is and this is also I'm very serious. So you have to forget, you have to war against it. If you want to close your eyes, close your eyes and pray. If I mean for you, like me, I walk around why? Because I don't want to think, I don't want to see. So that as I turn like this, if I finish looking at you, I turn already like this. If I don't like I turn like this. You have to avoid distraction while you pray. And like I said, your talking is greater than your thinking. Talk it and pray it loud if you if you are confused. If you are confused in your mind, pray the stupidity out. And it's those thinking that become pictures. Those pictures will haunt you very well. Do you get what I'm saying now? Please, you have to be able to do that. And don't be lukewarm while you are praying. Lukewarmness is demonization. Any believer that is lukewarm is demonized. Do you know what they mean by lukewarm? You are not hot, you are not cold. If you are cold, you are at least. If you are, you know, there is some water that is not hot, is not cold, it's very irritating. You wonder whether it looks like Panadol Extra. That is soaking that water. You know what I'm saying? In small baby, you throw it away. Man, it's not hot, it's not cold. If you want to be hot, you want to be cold, because you say it is cold, it's hot. But you are lukewarm. We don't even know the we don't even know the real meaning of it. It's just lukewarm. Look at it, lukewarm. Look like 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 earthworm, like tana. You know what I'm saying now? That's why some of you are they are praying with like this. So please, you have to put yourself aright and pray if you have to pray. When I talk about prayer posture, right? Posture. Find a posture that fits you. Find a posture. You see me, I can be walking like that. I can be walking like that for hours. I like it. Sometimes I will do my hand like this. I keep praying. Sometimes I do like this. I'll keep praying. It's a posture. And as long as you help me pray, I like it. You get what I'm saying now? I know a guy in my school there, he will just be like this. And that's how that guy will be praying. And you try, you survive. And I will fold his leg like this and be like this kind of thing. Ah, I will be sweating there. And he's just praying. He can remain like that. I know one day he will kneel down and pray. I know one day he will lie down. He will not sleep. At his lying there, he's praying. This is, it's a posture. The Bible says, Elijah, 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 that he put his head behind his, Elijah, he put his leg between his knees. And that guy prayed for seven hours. Can you do it? Your own is his disadvantage. That's his own advantage. I don't know why Jesus Christ will always leave me down, right? Muslims say he will fall at his feet and pray. That's what Jesus used to do. And they say we all of us will fall at our feet and pray. If I fall on my feet and pray, does that make me Muslim? It's a post of prayer. You get what I'm saying? So please, you can take any. Does the man? How does he used to pray? Does anybody in your church pray and do it like he it will come out? What does that up? You try it for one hour. Head back, stomach back, and back pain, neck pain. Maybe your head will come out and go there. You know, even for me, I was watching one one of their video. Hey, everybody in the church, I think they are possessed. Ah, 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 ah. They throw. That's a mountain of fire. They go to mountain of fire. And they will be doing like that for hours. Sis. Yes, I, I remember. I remember I, still, I was I was invited to to CSC one day to preach. 
You can see the picture. You see me with their garment. Yes. It's not CAC. No, CAC. Even this was they used to use bell. But this one, they are not. They are not. Okay. I'm telling you. After I reach the wind, one, one, then you stop. Sometimes they will not start. They will start doing one dance like that. I follow them as we do. When you see me with my garment, I follow them as we do. And that's it. Ah, with this garment, you see like this. I will be. <laughs> So, anyhow, you do pray. Just ensure you are praying. I don't know if you get the idea that. Just ensure you are praying. My father is the one that will kneel down. I have his pictures that he kneels down in the place, that the place, even a rock, the rock went inside like this. He put his leg, he kneel down and pray for hours. They say, Baba Nana need that. He said, He start praying now. He will not stop till two days. Have you followed? Have you had this thing? Yeah? How I many days? Three days. Let's try it. He was asked to pray for food. So that they will eat. So that they will eat. It's three days. For food, though. <laughs> Let's say we bring food now to eat.